Good afternoon, everyone. I know this is literally the graveyard shift. I am too short to stand behind this thing, so I will try to like move around like I know what I'm doing. Um, but thank you for still being here. I'm sure there's a few people who were here earlier who have not had the staying power and chutzpah that you guys have, so well done. Um, so the talk um, that I'll be doing this afternoon is really around marketers are busy. I mean, even probably as you're sitting right now, you're trying to um, figure out your 2019 budgets, um, you've got agencies and a whole bunch of people that are asking you for like your input, please approve that. We've got this particular campaign going live. Um, you've got your board asking you a bunch of questions. How are you closing the year? Are you behind on this particular number? This SKU is trash. Why do you even still have it? And you're trying to innovate and add to the 500 SKUs you are already have, you're busy. And then you have a bunch of people, you come to a conference like this and it all feels and sounds amazing, right? You're just like, yes, I would love to do work like that. But you're busy. So how do you navigate the space where you have so many things to do, but you really are trying to figure out how to feature from a digital perspective in a really powerful way. Someone I know kind of puts it this way. They say, the social and digital is the consumer's space. I mean, if you think of how personal your phone is to you, um, it's the consumer's space. Therefore, what does that mean? It means that if you're a brand, if you're a business, and you're kind of gate crashing that party, at least be decent. At least, you know, be charming. At least, like, don't. Don't be awkward. Don't be that guy who's like saying weird things that no one understands and you're trying to be too cool and you're trying to be too intimate with the hostess. Like it's not that deep. At least be decent. Bring a bottle of wine. I mean, just try. Try to be a little bit decent. And I think as marketers, we really don't do that too well. We're kind of like, I put my campaign out there, I use some type of insight, um, I got some really cool content, I even have an influencer, guys. I mean, <laughs> seriously, my campaign should be trending, but it's not. What is the reason? What did I miss? So this is kind of the conundrum that we have, right? I really want to do great digital work, but like, my life is pretty busy, I can't do that and close sales this month, or worry about why I didn't close sales last month, or any of the plethora of things that are sitting on our minds. So, we're gonna be going into the talk um, shortly. It's a very, very short talk, not much um, information or wording, but let's first play Kahoot. I don't know if you know Kahoot, so go um, into your browser and find kahoot.it. The game pin that is up there is incorrect because Kahoot, every time you kind of test it, it changes the game pin. So I didn't realize that and here we are. Um, so I will give you the correct game pin. So go to kahoot.it, when you get to the game pin, it's 455-0861. 455-0861. It's not the one that's up on the screen. <laughs> and the cool thing about Kahoot is like, you get to make up your coolest, um, nickname, like if you were to be a superhero, what would you call yourself? That's the cool thing about Kahoot. Um, my Kahoot game only has three questions and the prize is, I don't know, I'll give you a, a thing of sunlight soap. <laughs> that's what I have, that's what my business sells. I don't have anything else. You should, guys should have asked the guy from like Cartier or something to, to come and speak. The game pin is 455 0861. We've got Eagle, African guy, the German, who is probably German, Cardi B, really? <laughs> A little woohoo, Sergeant Major, Breezy, and there's someone who's just used an emoji, that's so cool. All right, awesome. So. The, what we're going to do is watch um, three really short videos and the, the questions that we're going to get afterwards are just based on the videos. Um, and
In 2015, Tuscalaga decided to create something that would bring all Kenyans together in celebration of the good times. Due to limited penetration of smartphones, you couldn't use digital apps to reach all Kenyans. And so Tim Kenya was born. Team Kenya is a platform that notifies an entire nation about landmark events, successes or victories worth celebrating, and lets them raise a tasker to that moment on us. By registering via USSD, we gave all Kenyans the opportunity to be part of the Team Kenya community. Every time there was a Kenyan success worth celebrating, they would receive not only a notification of that success, but credit automatically loaded onto their phones via M-Pesa that they could redeem to any bar and celebrate with the Tuscar on us. A comprehensive above the line and digital campaign that included TV, outdoor, print, radio, and Inba activations invited everyone to join Team Kenya, and Kenyans joined in their droves. Within a fortnight, we had surpassed our million member target and are now approaching two million and counting. The mobile nature of Team Kenya allows us to approach areas and times that require consumption stimulation at will and has seen Tasca reach to their highest sales in five years, which we think is a success worth raising at Tasca too. Four years ago, I lose my lens due to infection. I thought I was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Until I told her I'm a prosthetic leg. God, what jumping kids? In Pilo, I'm a big change. I'm a cool. Ned Bank heard Sandila's story and wanted to help. They wanted to motivate this young man to persevere through the rehabilitation process so that he can walk again. So they asked people to inspire Sandile by sending tweets of encouragement. They then took these tweets and turned them into a physical track, a Twitter track, for him to walk on every time he went to rehab. These tweets inspired him more than ever expected, and pretty soon he was beginning to run. So Nedbank created an activation at the Comrades Marathon that would challenge Sandile to do something incredible. To run along a 1.6 kilometer Twitter track at the Nedbank Green Mile. But not to simply run for fun, but to raise money for other kids who were like him. People rallied behind this cause and filled the 1.6 kilometer track with their tweets. With more than 300,000 runners and supporters at the event and over 2.5 million TV viewers, The Comrades was the perfect platform for Sandile to touch people's hearts. So the last, um, what do you call it? Uh, question um, that we'll have is particularly around this uh, campaign. This was a campaign um, that was done by McDonald's. The brand kind of said, how do we do something that really um, helps our consumers um, that are online? So they ran a very, very simple um, campaign, which was Twitter, Twitter, Twitter crush, Twitter crush, um, which said, DM us the details of your crush and we'll reach out to your crush and say, hey, someone wants to slide into your DMs. Um, so the brand kind of, you know, became Cupid in this moment where people kind of feel shy um, and the brand would then create um, gifts of uh, postcards or, you know, those types of letters that we used to send to each other um, in school. So the brand would create a letter based on the information that the person had given. Um, and then the person who received the message could either say, you know, hey, they want to know who this person is or they're just like awkwardly laugh and say, thank you, I'm in a relationship. Um, but 
I think the interesting thing about these three examples, one is around um, what, what, what is the, the level of input um, that was done here? Was it interesting? Was it simple? What was it um, that made these particular campaigns work? So back to our Kahoot, I've not forgotten that. Back to our Kahoot, our Kahoot literally has three games. The purpose of Kahoot is you need to answer as quickly as possible. The person who answers correctly and as quickly as possible is the winner. You have 10 seconds on each question. And we are starting now. Question, what was innovative about the Tusker campaign? One, was it harnessing passion? Two, great look and feel. Three, the use of mobile. Four, free beer. Someone said free beer. That is not correct. Um, harnessing passion and use of mobile. Oh, okay, I'll tell you guys the color. Sorry, it didn't work with the loading on, on the screens. I'll tell you the color. Cool. Let's start again. <laughs> okay, cool. And let's see if it'll let us start again. So there you go. What was innovative about the Tasca campaign? Green is beer, great look and feel is blue, use of mobile is yellow, red, harnessing passion. Ah, there you go. This person with the free beer is quite persistent. <laughs> They're like, what else could have made it better? Um, so the People who said use of mobile and harnessing passion, yes, you are correct. Yes. A uh, person who is in the lead is, yes, girl. Uh, <laughs> Merlot girl and Beyonce. We have the queen bee herself. Next one. What makes the Nedbank example special? Red, new way of sponsorship. Yellow, storytelling. Blue, getting the public involved. Green, finding Sandile. You guys are really quick. It was a trap because all the, qu all the answers are correct. So I think the important thing about that is there's very few times that you're going to find a silver bullet. One thing that's going to kind of make your whatever campaign, but if you start thinking about your campaigns in an ecosystem, in a way that says, okay, what do I have at my disposal? What are the assets that I have? And in this case, you had the person of Sandile, they were sponsoring um, the comrades anyway, but what could they do to really bring it closer um, to consumers? The storytelling um, was powerful, but really I think the thing that holds it together is how they involved consumers. So how consumers got involved in the process and felt like they were full participants in it. And the last one. Okay, everything changed. Patriot is in the lead. Game face, just Jade. No one else matters. Next. So how did the McDonald's example serve consumers? Red, it's simple. Blue, striking visuals. Yellow, brand accessible to consumers. Green, relevant for Valentine's. Hey, son, this one hit you guys, ne? You didn't get enough time. Let's try that one again. I'm fair, I'm fair. Let's try again. <laughs> Red, it's simple. Yellow, brand accessible to consumers. Blue, striking visuals. Green, relevant for Valentine's. It's tricky, eh? <laughs> uh, it was not just because it was relevant for Valentine's, but it's more around the simplicity and the brand making itself accessible to consumers, which is one of the things that we'll talk about. So this is our last question. Drum roll for the 2KG of Omo. <laughs> 
someone called a little woohoo. Who was that? Woohoo! Um, silver medal goes to Patriot. There's no such person. How did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> and then Game Face gets promoted to silver. There you go. Well done. I'll give you a coupon for a Unilever deal. That's all I have. That's as, digi <laughs> that's as digital as we're going to get. So I think one of the things, you know, we always have these conversations about Gen Z's and their phones, um, and um, it always sounds like Gen Z and millennials or some other people and not us. Um, I think you should try and get one of those apps where you try to um, track how much social media and how much you're actually on your phone. Um, I am on my phone, I think according to the last time I checked, 158 times a day. You think yours is less, you're judging me right now, yours is more. <laughs> so, small exercise, please unlock your phone and pass it to the person next to you. Person who is receiving the phone, please be honoring to the other person's phone. Don't do awkward things like go into their WhatsApps or DMs. <laughs> Person who has just handed over phone, explain how you are feeling right now. It's a little bit awkward. We're laughing because we've only known each other for like 15 minutes and now. <laughs> and you've saved your boss as something awkward. Um, it's fine guys, you can send the phones back. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. You can give the phones back. If you, please give the phones back. <laughs> Please, give the phones back. So the point is, our phones are really, really personal. So as marketers, we talk about creating content for mobile first and doing all of this cool stuff, but our phones are such a personal space. So the way in which we arrive in those spaces, we need to check ourselves to say, as I'm coming into the space, the same way as someone is kind of opening my phone and seeing what I do on my phone, what is it that we do to allow consumers to really look forward to our content or at the very least not be irritated by it? Um, how do you remove the irritation value? So Gen Z's and their phones, the only cool thing that I found on this um, recently was a study that was done in the US with um, Gen Z who are are about 13 to 18 years old, these people were asked a simple question. Would you rather not have your phone for three weeks or die? Die. No longer exist in the world. Obviously you can guess what they chose. They said they would rather die than not have their phones for three weeks. Um, some of us might not die, but there'd be a lot that would happen from you know, an anxiety perspective if you did not have your phone for three weeks. Um, and I think this is an important backdrop as we think about what it looks like to create powerful content and really engage with consumers in a meaningful way. So the brands that get it right, what is some of the stuff that they do? I think sometimes we come and we show nice case studies, but it's really, it doesn't help me as a person who needs to go and implement something or brief in something tomorrow, because my industry is different, my product is different, my consumers are different. So what can we learn from some of the brands that are getting it right and things that we can actually apply to our own businesses? And unfortunately, there is no you know, uh, 12 step program to get ourselves from doing pretty average marketing. I would love it. Unilever has 48 brands in South Africa, 60 across Africa. It is really hard to try to ensure that we're doing the right things across all of those spaces. But what we can do is start seeding some really important thinking and questions that we need to think about as we engage with our agencies and as we engage within our teams. So I think one of the, the main things that the brands that get it right really do is simplicity. I think our lives are busy, everyone's life is busy. I mean, especially in Johannesburg, it's like a, it's like a you know, you've done well 
and I mean, we've escalated it now. It used to be, oh, how are you doing? It used to be, oh, so busy. Now it's oh, crazy busy. I mean, we've added an adjective to this thing. So every single person is busy. So how do we ensure that when we do enter into their feed? Facebook says that consumers scroll through and thumb through um, about three feet of content every single day. That's apparently the size of the Statue of Liberty. So how in the world are they going to engage with your brand's content when they are just up, 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 uh, and until I see something from my friend or someone else that I think is quite important. So simplicity becomes critical. Authenticity. I think that one of the main things that we need to think about is how does my brand feature on social media? If my brand was a, a literally a human being, how would they feature on social media? How would they feature on digital? Because unless we've defined the authentic voice of our brands, it's easy for us to copy from each other, to copy the example from NetBank and say, hey, I need to brief something like this and come back with a plan. But really, the powerful brands that we're always all talking about are brands that have figured out their authentic voice and are consistent in that, but are hold on to their authentic voice aligned to how they engage and serve consumers. And courage, it's not going to be us doing the same old things that we've done before, um, the same tried and tested work. It's leaning into the positive discomfort of doing something new, but also not like being absolutely ridiculous. Today you are this guy, tomorrow you're talking completely differently. But how do we keep consumers at the center? One of the tough things is we say all the right things. I think marketers are great marketers of marketing. I mean, we will say all the right things. We will go into our boards and yes, consumer driven, consumer focused. I mean, we say all the right things, but actually if we're being honest and put up our hands, you know, we'll all close our eyes and put up our hands and be honest here for a minute. How much of what we do really is based on empathy for the people that we serve? How much of it really stops and says, sure, is the person really gonna care that we've done this particular piece of work? I think it's difficult because we have our boards and all of these things that we need to, to um, manage, but how do we do that um, as we communicate and engage with consumers? This is a quote from Steve Jobs. It's about aligning creativity with technology. I think there's, there's a lot that we've heard about how do you drive utility? How do you ask a consumer to tell you what they want? Consumers are not gonna tell you what they want. Consumers are gonna tell you their pain points. Your job is to do the hard work of figuring out how you can intercept that space. And the beauty of this, the time that we're in is because creativity and technology have the opportunity to really serve consumers in powerful ways. So Google's approach to innovation, um, is a 10 times, not a 10% thinking. So what this means is, um, if you were gonna take Omo, for example, let's go with my brand. If you were gonna take Omo, for example, and you're like, oh my gosh, we need to make Omo better. What you could do is say, hey, let's just like maybe change the packaging, like add one like, vibey flavor, like what are, what are, like what's in guys? What are like the ingredients that are in? What are consumers into? Like we, we could do that. We probably do it quite often as a business as well, but that would be improving the product by 10% and it might even be the right thing. Improving the product by 100%, um, I mean by, by 10 times, might be to say, why in the world do we believe that people want powdered soap to begin with? What if people don't even want to be washing their own clothes? What if people want to be gathering somewhere, drop their clothes off? I don't know, it could be anything, but it's really to say how you think about the ways in which you provide exponential value to consumers really is about, okay, this is what we're doing now, but if we were to push ourselves, open ourselves to thinking about it bigger, what would that look like? And the question is, what is the 10 times better of my brand's digital ideas? And I think even more than figuring out the answer to this, the better thing to do is to figure out the right questions to ask of the people who need to help us. In my previous role, um, 
I'd come from uh, just doing uh, being a brand manager and I needed to now lead a digital department so literally tech and these people are telling you about um, SQL front-end servers and the uh, port 40 which is not opening and not talking to port 880 because when they had opened it the JavaScript so this was now the, the life that I needed to live. And I remember when I started, I said, I only know 15% of what this job requires. So I spent for like the first two months being like, oh shucks, what the hell am I actually doing? And then eventually I was like, no, I don't need to know the answers. There's a bunch of people who are here, who are in this business, agencies, whoever they are, who my only job is to figure out the right questions to ask of them and to push them to do the right things. So how could we, as our brands, serve consumers? And what does it even mean? What does that mean, to serve consumers? So if you were to walk into a beautiful restaurant, there's many restaurants like this around this area in Rosebank. I mean, there's a certain feel that you get when you see this restaurant. There's a little bit of an upmarket um, feel to it, um, but it's probably not too pristine, but it's like a, you can feel what the, the, the ambience of this type of space is. And then if I took you to a place like this, it feels very different, right? But it's still a restaurant, it's still an experience. So the things that are the table stakes are, doesn't matter how the restaurant feels, the ambience, please have decent food, please have decent service at a minimum. Those are the table stakes. Then the ambience and the experience that gets created here versus here is then where the differentiation happens. What does that mean? It means there's some stuff that we believe as marketers we are doing and we're doing great work but they're actually table stakes. And what we need to figure out is what are the table stakes of just being on digital and what are the things that my brand is doing that differentiates it from the next brand, from the next category and from the next guy who's doing some cool stuff on digital and a few brands have figured this out right um, so this is not an exhaustive list it's just some stuff that I've seen and I don't uh, spend a lot of time on um, social media either but I'll show you a few we just have been conditioned to go to the corner and find our spot where we've been placed there is a section called ethnic and there is an aisle called beauty. To be honest, we've dealt with it our whole lives to the point of internalizing it. Do I feel like I'm beautiful? Is ethnic not beautiful? When I go to the beauty aisle, I feel secluded and out It's been frustrating. This, this is just the and way it is. How can I break down those walls? We are Shea Moisture, and now we can be found in the beauty aisle, where we all belong. So this is a one of my favorite brands, actually, and not because it's a Unilever brand, but because it's a really, really powerful brand that chooses to stand in the gap and stand for something with their consumers. And the brand is um, hair and um, personal care, um, but they really pride themselves in talking about three things. One is the celebrating you. So they've figured out, in terms of those table stakes and their ambience, their ambience is, we're actually going to celebrate you. Um, we're going to talk about community. So they talk about how consumers actually um, are involved in the process. So as you purchase this product, this is how you are actually making an impact. And they talk about their values as a business. Their ingredients are top quality ingredients. Their prices are really high, but consumers have bought into the proposition. So it's really figuring out for your brand and your business, what are the things that allow you to differentiate from those table stakes to the type of ambience um, that you can then create. Funerals. 
I'm not going to go into this. I'm sure you guys have seen the Sunlam examples multiple times, but I think really the key thing around it is leading a new narrative, simplicity, and that level of authenticity. I mean, all of us knew that WhatsApp existed, but their ability to bring this tense um, conversation really at the forefront of people's faces is really powerful. And what about influencer marketing? I think we need to treat ourselves as micro influencers. We as brands are not you know, the places where people run to. We are micro influencers and what can we learn from micro influencers? What we can learn from micro influencers is that they lead for something, they pay a lot of attention to their craft, they listen really well to what their audiences actually want and they are consistent. So what are the ways in which we apply this to, to our brands? And the final thing is, what assumptions do we need to question? I think we, we we can have conversations and we can really be amped up um, and passionate, but I think the real starting point is figuring out some key questions that we can start to ask to challenge ourselves, to challenge our teams, and to challenge our um, partners. One, what tensions do our consumers face? We know this, but do we actually apply it in terms of our digital solutions and the campaigns that we put out there? How could our brand serve them in those tensions? What complexity do we need to remove? This, I think, is quite important because our businesses really are built on complexity. You need to be in a business in order to really understand how it works. Consumers don't care. They don't care how your operations work. They don't care that your sales team sits separately to your marketers, to your ops team, etc. It's not their problem. So how do we remove the complexity so that they have that full, beautiful, omni-channel experience, the same across every touch point that you have? Have, that they would the f warm fuzzy feeling from your video um, the next one how should our brand communication make the consumers feel you know from when you look at user journey and CX experience mapping you look at all your different touch points and you say at this point how is a consumer currently feeling and how should they feel and what can you do at that touch point to shift how they feel to be positive but also positive in a way that is aligned and authentic to your brand not asking for too much and if we were to come up with two courageous ideas what would they be I think what we've learned within Unilever is proof of concept and testing is a lot more valuable than trying to figure out some really big stuff and trying to land one thing. What does it look like for your business and your brand to test out? What have I said today? You're busy. Figure out some questions that you need to ask yourself, some questions that you need to ask of yourself, of your partners. How do you push them um, in the types of questions? Because it's only through that that you will be able to start getting the type of results that you're looking for by being simple, by being authentic, and by choosing to be courageous as you engage and gatecrash consumers' parties. Thank you.